Okay, this is John from tcmathacademy.com, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at this nice little question that has to deal with fractions. Let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. This is one of these fill-in-the-blank questions, so this is going to be a lot of fun. But it says, uh, when reducing a fraction, you need to blank the blank and blank and cross-cancel like blanks. So if you think you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer uh, into the comment section. Of course, this would be uh, word one, two, three, and four. There might be a little bit slight of uh, slight variation in terms of correct possible answers, but I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, check out my math help program again at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to my program in the description below. And by the way, if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. Again, these type of questions are good to, you know, just kind of get a good review your knowledge and kind of command of your understanding of fractions. But let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. It says, when reducing a fraction, you need to factor. So that's the word I was looking for. You need to factor the numerator, and I just kind of abbreviated here, the numerator and denominator. And then we need to cross-cancel like factors. So this is the correct answer. And, uh, you know, there might be a little bit of a uh, variation in terms of possible ways you could have expressed this without using these exact words. Um, I'm not really thinking of, an, of any right now, but you'll know whether in fact you got this right. So we need to factor. So when we're, do, when we're reducing, I'm going to show you an example here in a second, a fraction, you need to be able to factor numbers. Okay. This is critical. Your ability to factor numbers, of course, is going to be a number in the numerator and the uh, denominator. And then we're going to look to see if there are, um, like factors, and if there are, we can cross cancel them. Let's go and actually see this in action right now. But let's, uh, before we do that, I always like to kind of give you those, uh, give credit to those of you who got this correct. So let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face in A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that you answered a fraction. Uh, fill in the blank question today, today successfully. I'm pretty sure they'll be uh, very impressed with that. But let's go ahead and see what this actually means in terms of reducing a fraction. So reducing a fraction is basically simplifying a fraction. So let's take a look at the fraction uh, 10 over 20. So would you leave that fraction like this? Well, hopefully not. Hopefully you're saying, well, that fraction is equal to this fraction. We over here, uh, one half. So in mathematics, you always want to write things in their simplest form. That's not like an optional thing as well. So you'd be like, eh, I don't really care about writing things in their simplest form because I don't want to do the work. Well, it doesn't work that way. Okay, you got to uh, uh, be able to reduce or simplify fractions. But let's go ahead and see how we go from here to here. So as the fill in the blank question states, what we need to do when we're, uh, when we're uh, reducing fractions, we need to be able to factor the numerator and denominator. So the numerator is a top number and the denominator is the bottom number. Now there's a little bit of flexibility in terms of um, factoring. Now it's, oftentimes you're going to want to prime factor, but it's not uh, always the case in terms of having to prime factor the numerator and denominator. What you want to do is be looking for like factors. So if you can think of obvious like factors, you know, go ahead and, you know, just fat, you need to factor in some manner. That's the main idea. You don't necessarily need to prime factor. Now, in this case, I am prime factoring both the numerator and denominator. So here I have 10 over 20. I'll show you another way we could uh, do this problem here in just one second. So I'm going to factor 10 as 2 times 5 and 20 as 2 times 2, which, of course, is 4 times 5. This is all 20. And these are all prime factors. So now the next part of this is once we factor the numerator and denominator, we want to go uh, uh, for we want to search for like factors between the numerator and denominator. So let's start over here. So there's a five. This is a by the way. Let's just make sure you understand the word factor. Okay. So two and five are factors of ten because two times five. When you multiply this, this product is equal to 10. Okay, so I don't want to be remiss there, just in case you don't know what these words mean. 
So here, five is a factor in the numerator and five is a factor in the denominator. Again, we're talking about factors. These are like factors, i.e. they are the same, so we could cross cancel them. In other words, they could just kind of go away. So now we have two as a factor in the numerator and two as a factor in the denominator. Now we have two twos here, but the, here's the way this works. Only one factor can cross out, one like factor can cross out only one other like factor. So in other words, there's one two here. So this uh, uh, can only cross cancel one of the twos, not two of the twos. Now, what is left? Well, we have a two remaining in the denominator and one is always a factor. Now I could technically write a one here as a factor because one is a factor of everything, but uh, it's kind of just implied that you understand that. So there is a one remaining over here. So what is left? A one in the numerator, which of course is our one right here, and a two in the denominator. So 10 over 20 is simplified or reduced to the fraction one half. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this problem, 10 over 20. Let's use different factors this time. So let's just say, oh, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna do this as one times 10, and then I'll think of 20 as two times 10. That's perfectly fine. Now 10, these are not like factor, I'm sorry, they're not uh, prime factors, but they are like factors. And you're just kind of thinking to yourself, well, this is super easy to do because I don't have to break this up any further. So I could cross cancel like factors that leaves me with the fraction one half remaining. Okay, so I think these uh, fill in the blank questions are good, just kind of a good way to review not only um, you know uh, terminology that you need to understand in mathematics, but just to kind of make sure you understand the specific steps to doing a kind of like a mathematical procedure, okay? A lot of math, not all of math, but a good portion of mathematics is knowing the procedure, knowing the steps. And there's a specific step, step one, step two, step three, et cetera, et cetera. And I think questions like this are very helpful. So, uh, you know, as checks to make sure you understand the specific steps in order to solve a math problem. Now, if you need additional help with fractions, check out a couple different courses uh, at my math help program. My math foundation course and my pre-algebra course would be good options for you. Also, I have a ton of additional videos about fractions on my YouTube channel as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.